Okay, so we've got extract four to look at now. There's a few. There's a few. Uh, there, there are less details in this section than the, than the, the previous one. The first detail is a really important one, though, because it's a description of this chipmunk um, leaving an acorn. It says here, a chipmunk hearing Judson's heavy tread abandoned the acorn he was about to add to his store within the cabin wall and disappeared like an electric bulb burning out. Now, the first thing to note is this detail here. He abandons an acorn. Now, this is an important suggestion because the animal needs this acorn and so it detects that, that Judson is a threat to him. You know, and, and, and the fact that an animal is able to pick up on this malicious malice, this malice in his personality, suggests how extreme it is. But also there's an irony here, because it suggests that the animal is sensitive in a way that he's not. He is lacking in feeling, as we've seen from this, for the previous detail when he talks about his wife getting all of his possessions. He lacks feeling. But here... The animal seems to possess a type of awareness, and an, an emotional awareness almost, that Judson lacks. And then finally here, this description, the animal disappeared like an electric bulb burning out. The simile itself, I think, suggests the dramatic conclusion of the, of the text. Even though it isn't specifically characterization, it is a type of action that the animal is carrying out. And it suggests the loss of life that we think concludes the story. Then Judson, reaching for his boots, stepped fairly upon the acorn. <coughs> now there's an enormous amount of irony involved in this. And it is, again, it's an action that he carries out. But what is ironic about this is that here he's harmed by a consequence of his own hostility. So the consequence of his hostility is the animal's fear of him. The animal is scared of him because he is so aggressive and hostile. He is harmed by something that is a result of how horrible he is. And so there is a kind of circular suggestion about this, that if you are hostile and horrible and unpleasant to the world, it will come back and be hostile and unpleasant to you. So his hostility and his unpleasant character, in the end, has indirectly caused the situation that's put him in harm's way. So his attachment to being harmful has put him in danger. Then finally, another layer to this is when Alec comes to help him. It was not much of a fall, Mr. Webb. You ain't cut none. Just knocked out for a minute. Here, take this. It'll pull you together. And so even though he is immediately just harmed by the fall, it's actually the kindness of an innocent person that kills him. And so this is a saying. It's, it's Alec speaking. But it's the kindness of Alec that actually ends up killing him. And what that suggests to us is that he find he cannot imagine that there would be poison in this whiskey bottle. And so Judson's evil intent is difficult to imagine for an innocent person. You know, the fact that Alec would never dream of there being a murderous sort of con substance in this whiskey bottle suggests that Judson's evil is beyond the imagination of ordinary innocence and it, it's a way of intensifying how evil he seems that people carrying out an act of kindness in the end kill him because his evil is so difficult to understand for most people 